In this video, we will see how to create a poker bot that uses GPT-4B, the new vision model from OpenAI, to play automatically to poker. We'll be using PokerTH in this case, this open source desktop game to play poker, but this could be used for other poker games or other applications. You will find the blog of this video with all the code, all the links and all the information in the description. So go in the description to find the Medium blog and you will be able to copy and paste all the code and it will be easier to follow along. So we could also play with GPT-4 in poker, sending at every turn, which is our card, which are the cards in the table and so, but it's long to put this by hand with text. And also we have to put not only our cards and table cards, but also it's important to know how many money we have, what are the, the bets of all the other players, their amount of money, if it's available, like in this case. So this is a lot of information to put by, by hand uh, with text and it's better if we can have this automatically. So these new vision models allow us to, to send the full screenshot of the game and make faster the, all the information of the game to the model with the image, not with all the words, because uh, it's better one image than a thousand words, as they say. So now we are able to do this automatically so much faster. So in a real case, because this is a simulation in our computer against bots, but in a real game, we have a limited time to, to take the decisions for our turn. So it's better if we can send all the board information in a single image and get a response in a few seconds. We'll be automating this in Python using some libraries, but I want to also do a disclaimer here. So as I said, this is a local game against, as you can see, other bots, not real players. And this money is not real. It's a simulation of the money. So we are not putting here any payment method or, or so. And I think that it's legal to use bots to play poker online. Well, maybe it's not always legal, but can be legal sometimes. But even so, I don't recommend doing this in real situation because you can lose a lot of money because these uh, agents are not perfect and they can lose. So they can play poker, but maybe are not good and can make um, huge errors. So don't put real money with these systems and uh, better if you don't apply this in real conditions. It, this is only a demonstration. And if you can learn how to do this in these poker conditions, you can apply the same methodologies for other games or other more useful and better applications. Okay, so with that being said, let's see how to program this poker bot that is playing for us. We are this center player and I haven't touched anything so far. And it's doing calls, bets, and it's reasoning why it's a better move at every time. So let's see how to use GPT-4B and how to build a poker bot with it. Okay, so let's start by doing a basic example of how to use the new GPT-4B model from the API. So here we can see the official documentation. Uh, you can find here some description of the model, how it works and how to call it in uh, different ways. So we'll be doing a similar example of the ones that we can find here. Uh, you will find all of these links and also the code that we'll be using in the blog that you will find in the description. So here you can check more details of how the images are processed, like the pixels are transformed into tokens. So depending on the resolution, we'll be spending more or less tokens. And here are some frequently asked questions. And in order to use the API, you need to have an API key from OpenAI. So you have to come to platform.openai.com and create here an account if you don't have it, and then go to API keys and then fulfill the requirements. You have to put a way of payment and validate your account. So then you'll be able to create here a new secret key and get the, the full value of this key. And you'll be able to use it to call the API later in the, in the code. OK, so now we'll go to our Visual Studio Code editor or your favorite code editor, and we'll create a folder for our project. This is mine, GPT-4B PokerBot. And now I have to create an images folder. I will call it like this. And to start, I will put here an example image. I will use this image as an example. You can use this one or any other. It's just for demonstration purposes to, to check that it works. OK, so this is my example image. I have it here. And let's create a notebook to develop our poker bot. Let's call it poker bot dev because here we'll be developing step by step our logic and the examples. So we'll start by importing OpenAI from OpenAI and Base64. And in order to use OpenAI, uh, we'll have to install it. So we can open the, the terminal. So before installing the Python libraries, we'll create the virtual environment. This is a recommendation, but it's up to you. So let's do Python virtual environment. And now we have here our virtual environment. Now let's activate the virtual environment. 
like this uh, in Mac and Linux is different. You can search it in Google how to do it. And now we can do the pip install of these libraries of here, OpenAI, NumPy, pautogi, and OpenCV. Those are the four libraries that we'll be using, the external libraries. The other ones are already installed in Python, so let's install them. And now we can already run this. So let's start by creating here a helper function. This function will be used to encode our image to base64 so we can send it in the in the request. So this will encode our image in text format to be passed to the API. Then we'll be defining the path of our image. So this images folder example pic.jpg. So this is the path of it. And we're converting already this image from here to the base64 format. Now we can already create the client of the OpenAI API. So here you will need your API key. There are different ways of dealing with the API key with the environment. So you can have it, for example, in your Windows or your Linux or Mac environment variables, and you won't need to do this. But if you haven't done it yet, it's the easier way and not much safe if you share this code. So make sure that you don't share this code publicly because here you will expose your API key. But here you have to replace this string with your real API keys that normally starts with SK, this dash, and whatever key you have here. So this is one option, but as I have my API key in my environment variables, I will do another way. So uh, I will do it like client and simply calling OpenAI, the class, but without any parameter here because it will already find my API key in my environment variables. Okay, now we have the client, so we can already create the method to call it. So we'll be using the chat method with completions and we'll create this request to the API. We'll be using uh, the GPT-4 vision in this case. Now it's in preview yet, so if you come from the future, maybe it's not already in preview, it's in a stable version, but for now we will have to put GPT-4 vision preview. We'll be telling, first of all, that our request of here uh, that we are the role user and the content of our message will be first of all a prompt the instructions of what it has to do so our instruction now will be pretty simple like describe what's in the image so this will be only our current instruction and here we'll send another message that will be of type image url and we'll send our image in code in base64 so here in this uh, variable of here we are passing the the image that we had here in our folder encoded in base64 so it can receive it in a web in this web format let's say so, okay we'll put 300 tokens uh, as maximum of its output let's put 500 okay so now we can already check the results but first we'll have to print them so here we'll have our response that will be quite complete so let's see what's the full response now we are requesting again to the model and here in the choices we have uh, our message set completion message and the content of the message is the image depicts a painting that features escape sense blah, blah, blah. So it's basically a quite long response. It's describing what it saw in the, in the image, a basic description of it. So let's print only the response of it like this. Now, if we do it again, um, well, we'll have another response. So let's, let's check what's the new response because it will be slightly different probably. So now we have here only the message and not the other details of the response. And we have here the response message and probably it will be slightly different. Why? Because we have a temperature by default of 0.7 or so, I think. I'm not sure what's the actual value of the default temperature value, but it's not zero. So if we want to have always the same response with the same image, we need to put at least temperature at zero, dot zero. So then we'll have always the same response. But for today's demonstration, I will put a low value because I want some consistency. I don't want mass temperature, but a little bit maybe it will be good for today's experiments. So now it is plain with more lines, with three lines. And we could try now to, if we remember what was the example image, it's a painting. So we can ask for the for more specific things like the styling of the of the picture or how to create a painting like this, what's the technique, or to name similar authors that created paintings in this style. So we can imagine many, many related questions that will be more useful, more specific to this task. And we could change this task of here, this prom instruction to this more specific, um, the model would be much, much helpful. But now let's go to the next step. Let's see how to install the Poker TH game that we'll be using today. 
So in order to install Poker TH, the Poker Texas Hold'em, that it's a open source game for your local machine. So it's for Android, Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac OS. So it's for almost all platforms. To install it, you have to come to the official website and here in download, you can search the installer for your platform and download it and install it. So the thing here with this example is that if you know and you understand how to build this uh, poker bot using poker TH, you will be able to, to implement a similar example in other platforms or other games, not only poker, but also other kinds of games. So whenever you have poker TH installed, you can come here to, to the main menu. And first you can come here to the settings and configure your poker th so the initial thing uh, it's mandatory you have to go here and this will be checked by default so make sure that this is unchecked and then optionally we can come here to nicks and avatars and you can change here the photo the your profile picture and even upload one or leave it blank without any image and you can check here the your avatar name so then this is a little bit important because we will be telling to the bot which player are we, so the name of our player, and then the GPT-4V will know better which is the, the player that he is playing with. Now we can check OK here, and uh, in order to get familiarized with Poker TH, you can start a local game. This is how we will be playing. Uh, it's possible also to create local, like in your LAN uh, network, local games and play with colleagues and so without here we'll, we see some cash but it's fictitious so it's not real dollars we haven't put here any payment method or so it's only to make a simulation of a real game and we see here how is the the world maybe your windows will be larger we're playing against nine other bots from player one to nine you can see here and we are the one of the middle in the bottom so we are this one of here and we can do now in this in this condition this is our cards so we are seeing them because we did that uh, option and check in the settings and now given these conditions uh, we can raise call or fold let's call for now so you can try to play a little bit if you know the rules of poker you can see here some information about the possible hands so the next step uh, i recommend you to to make the window as small as possible so this is the smaller size that it allows me to do and also to place it here next to the um, the top right of the screen because then uh, we need we need it to be always consistent at the same place with the same size because we'll be cropping the this uh, part of the of our screen and we'll be telling the coordinates to crop it. So we need it consistently. So this is how I do it. I do the window as small as possible and I put it in the top right of the screen always like in the same place. Okay, you can finish the game if you want, but I will close it for now. So now we already have our both ingredients for today that are the GPT-4V working from the API and also Poker TH working and we understood how to use it. So now we can go back to the VS code and go for the next step, the third step. That will be doing a manual poker bot, a basic assistant that will be basically taking a screenshots of our game board and giving us some recommendations that will be manually applying. So let's see how to create this. So we'll come here to the first cell, the, the demo of the GPT-4B. We can copy this one of here, paste it in this part of here, and we'll be changing two things. First one is this path of here, the example picture. We'll call it poker.png. This will be our image now for the poker game. And the second thing that we'll have to do is to create here a prom instructions. So this will be our prom now. As uh, it's too large, so we'll be removing the previous one. And instead of putting here this long text in here, we'll be putting this variable prom instructions. So now uh, all of this will be going here, but here is better managed and better seen. So basically now our prom instruction now will be uh, more complex. So we'll be telling it that it's a, this is a game theory research project and you are a mathematician. So we are telling this role to, to the agent, to GPT-4B, uh, that is an expert in poker game theory. We have to create this story and so, well, it's not that fake because we are doing this for research and so we are not playing the real poker. But you have to make this because otherwise we won't like to assist you in playing. So because it's not allowed, um, OpenAI puts so many barriers and um, firewalls, let's say, to not allow to do like bad things or gambling or this kind of unethical or dangerous things. So we have to create this uh, game theory research project environment, let's say, to make it respond us and help us. 
and we'll be telling that the image that it will be receiving is a screenshot of the Texas Hold'em poker game running locally in a computer. So this is true. We are not telling any lie. And well, we will be telling that which options uh, it has. It can either bet, raise, call, check or fall. So these are the five options that we, we can have. Uh, so usually we have uh, three of them, but this is the total five possibilities that that we'll be telling it that it has. We are not considering the all-in option because maybe it's too much dangerous, let's say. And uh, taking into account this information, make a short reasoning. This is important because if we don't tell it to make a short reasoning, it will respond probably with a long text and we have a limited time to play the poker game. Maybe in this local game, no, we can spend as much time as we want because it's local against uh, other bots. But in real conditions, we want a fast response and a fast action. So we will restrict its output like this. And to tell the short reasoning in a single sentence, follow with a semicolon, and then to, to put bet, raise, call, check, or fold in capital letters and only that word. So in this way, it will be easier for us to parse later each action, let's say. And keep it simple, follow the instructions consistently and don't explain anything else. So with all of this from engineering, it has been working quite well for me, let's say. So you can try to modify this, but most of the times, if you don't make it clear for it that it's a research project that we are not gambling for real, it won't want to assist you. It will tell you that um, it's not able to, to gamble or to do this kind of instructions. So with this new prompt, we'll send it here. And now what we have to do is go again to Poker TH. We'll, we can create a new game. We have here the window as before. And now in, in Windows, uh, when it's our turn, that is just now, we can do Windows Shift S and we will be uh, doing a cropping of the image. I don't know if you can see it, but okay, I did a crop of, the, of this window and now we can go to Paint and um, in Paint Paste, the image that we have cropped and now you can go and save it in this folder of here. So look for your project folder and images and here you have to uh, very important to name the image as poker.png. That's the path that we told it. And this is the path of the new image, images slash poker png. So this one of here. So now we have everything ready. So let's see what it thinks that we should do in this uh, condition. Now it's our turn. And it says that with a weak hand, uh, six and two. So, okay, it identified properly our cards. It's facing uh, arrays and multiple colors. The optimal play is to minimize losses and exit the hand. So it's recommending us to fold. Okay, it's a, um, it's a weak hand, so probably it's the best thing to do. So in this way, we can see here shortly a very a short reasoning, uh, but it has been quite good. And also the final action to take. Okay, let's try again now in this new uh, game. And I will be again copying uh, the screenshot, uh, the part of the screenshot of the of the game. I will be pasting here in top. So it's a recommendation to leave paint open or the uh, any program that you're using for this. So I will be pasting this in top, okay, and saving it again. Uh, it will be saved overwriting the previous uh, image. So now I have here the updated image, this game of here. Let's try to put this better like this okay let's run this again in these conditions now we have a j and a nine so we see here its response and it's saying that with a j and nine basically it's not a bad hand so let's let's call it it says okay let's see what happens now other players are doing its movements okay and now we can see the first three cards and um, so now in order to, to play again we have to uh again Crop this part of the board, go again into paint, paste, so repeat the process, save the image, and run again the cell. It's not that bad, but we'll be automating this in a moment. So it says now that with the 776, so it's been identifying pretty well the, the cards in the table as well. With this flop, okay, so it says that okay, it's safe to check. So let's let's do it. And we can keep with this process again and again, and probably it will be do uh, more or less good. I think that it's not a, an expert, but I'm neither an expert to value how good is GPT-4, so it works at least, let's say. And okay, let's uh, close this for now. I will open it again in a moment. Okay, so now the next step will be to create some methods to later be able to automate everything. So now we have to calibrate, let's say, a couple of things. 
Uh, one is to understand uh, what region we have to crop. So we, we have to open Poker TH again and start the local game as before and place it, uh, for me, it's here in the top right, as you see. So I have to place it as I was doing before. Okay, now uh, I have to understand what are these pixel values, the corners, to crop the image. And first, I will import this, these libraries. NumPy, pauto, GUI, and Maplotlib. And um, I just seen that uh, we have to install Maplotlib. I missed it before. We'll be using Maplotlib basically to display the cropped images to make sure that we are cropping what we wanted. Okay, now we can continue. So we have these three libraries. Pauto GUI will be used to crop the board now. And later also it will allow us to click automatically and to press keyboard uh, keys automatically by the bot to make the bot able to take actions. And NumPy will be used to crop the images that will be taken from the screenshots. So this initial method will allow us to see the image, the crop image. I will have to resize this. We have to see the game board here. Okay, so we can run these libraries and now we can rerun this. And I already optimized these values of here. So this is screenshot height. So in my entire screen, uh, you are not seeing it now, but it's larger than what you see now. So H goes from zero to 630. And the width of this window of here is from 1540 to 2560. So these are the values of my screen. But now, for example, if this was a wrong value, you can see now that it's distorted. So I should adapt this going like value by value until we can see in this image only the, the window of the poker game and uh, make sure that we are not losing any important information so you don't uh, crop too much or too less. Uh, we have to uh, adjust this properly. So after some iteration for me, those were the proper values where I can see my window properly fitting in the image. So now we are able to automatically with these commands of here to take screenshots without using paint, the window shift S commands and to having to save it manually. And the next step will be to find another crop region that is smaller. And we want to check uh, now if it's our turn or not. And you can see that uh, whenever it's our turn, this area of here, our player area, it's lighted up like this. We have here a light. If we do now a race, let's say, now it's not lighted up. So it's always lighted up for the player that it's its turn to play. So we will be cropping a small area of here and we'll be seeing if that area is uh, is lighted or not. So we'll be analyzing with NumPy the mean of the values of the pixels in that area to understand if it's our turn or not. Uh, every 0.5 seconds, we'll be checking if it's our turn or not. And whenever, again, it lights up, this area of here, uh, we'll know that it's our turn. So we'll be able to do the full screenshot, this crop of the, all the board, and send it to GPT4V and wait for its response. But if it's not our turn, we have to wait to be our turn because otherwise the image won't have the complete information for us to play. Okay, so to do this uh, other crop, we'll do it with a similar method. So now uh, we'll be adjusting this plate light height and play light width. So we are looking for this height and width of this small area. I already set them. Uh, those are the values for my, my case, having everything set it like this. You will see what I mean. So it's a, it's a very small region in this corner of here that now uh, we already did it. Maybe I have to move my image a little bit or maybe it's better to, to adjust the parameter. So I want to have this uh, lighted part of here more in the center of this small image. So I have to do it maybe with 295 and 305, let's say. Okay, now we see here the corner. So now uh, all of this is lighted up because it's our turn. And also, um, whenever you have also the width of it, so make sure that you find this small region in the corner. So now uh, I'm taking the crop of this screenshot, this small part, and doing the mean of it, the, the average uh, of the values, the pixel values, and it's uh, 52. I'm printing it here. It's 52 in this case that it's our turn. So now let's try to call, for example, and now that it's not our turn, let's run it again. And we see here that it's not lighted and it's 40 now the value of the average of these pixels of here because now it's it's not our turn so we have to find these two values for me it's it was 52 when it was our turn and 40 when it's not our turn so we have to find for example 46 uh, as a as a trigger as a threshold to understand uh, if it's above or below this value to understand if it's or not uh, our turn 
So those are the, the the two things that we have to find in this part. This um these crop values, these four crop values, and the threshold uh, of when it's our turn and when not. Let's put here in a comment that uh 40 not our turn and 52 our turn. So 46 will be the threshold in, in my case. If you find a slightly different values, just add to your case a uh, threshold. Okay, now we can already go to the final part. So to create the, the automatic bot, we'll be putting this command here because we'll be developing the code in this cell of here, but it will be nicer to run this from the terminal in a normal Python file. And this command of here will allow us to create uh, from the code that we put in this cell to create a separate uh, Python file in the same folder with its content. But here in this cell, we have all the previous methods and it's it's good to, to develop and to experiment. But uh, we'll create the final poker bot, the automatic one in a Python file like this. So we'll be importing all of these libraries. So mainly the, the ones that we have been using so far with the addition of CV, the open CV to, to save the images and time. Now the next step will be to put here these four values that we have found here. So I have to modify this one that I recalibrated. So here you have to paste the values that you found for the pixel coordinates for the crops. And now we'll define a function that will uh, see if it's our turn or not. So basically it will be taking a screenshot in this image. It will converting in a NumPy array. It will doing the small crop of the shadow of the light part. I have to rename this. I put shadow, but it's a light in reality. So, uh, so basically it will be cropping that small area, that corner of our player spot and looking if the mean of that area is above or below the, the threshold value that we found here, this 46. So this will be finding the threshold. So if it's our turn, it will return true in is my turn, and otherwise it will return false. So that was uh, this helper function, and now we can already create playing true and the uh, infinite loop while playing. And now if is my turn, so we'll be calling this function of here and it will check if it's our turn or not. If it's not our turn, it will go to the here to the end and it will sleep for, let's say, half a second. Otherwise, if it's our turn, we will start by uh, taking the time, the time zero. So what time is now with this function of here in seconds. Now we'll capture the screenshot of the game board with the screenshot H and screenshot Y. Now we'll take a screenshot of the entire screen first, uh, convert it to an MP array, and then we are able to crop it to have only this uh, part of here, the part from the window. We will declare again, because this is a separate code, uh, the, the image path. Uh, so it's here, images, uh, poker.png. Here we'll be saving every, every screenshot. And the screenshot that we took, writing it here. And here we have the function that we already created before to encode to base64 this image to be able to send it to the API. Now it's pretty much as before, uh, the same steps, because now we are putting everything together to automate all the steps. So now here we are encoding the image, uh, again, creating the OpenAI client. And remember your API key, if you put it before here, you can uh, do it again as, as we did before. But if you have it as me in the environment variables, you don't need this. You can directly create the client like this. Now the same probe instructions as before. I haven't changed anything here. Uh, we know that this works. Now let's put here a try and accept because it could be normally it will work, but uh, sometimes if there is any error with the API or so, this will be better to, to handle the, the problem. So let's try now to do the request to the model as we did before as well. Okay, so this is uh, also the same. And now instead of printing the response, we'll pass the response to this message. And now, as we know that the, the message will be the reasoning of the model in a sentence, a semicolon, the action and a semicolon, we already put away the last semicolon. And then we know that the action will be in the message is split. It. So here the message will be the reasoning, a semicolon and the action. So we'll be splitting this semicolon and taking the, the second part, the last time of this list that will be splitting the reasoning and the action. 
and let's strip any blank value that sometimes uh, could be and also putting it in upper so in in uppercase uh, just in case that the model forgot to put the letters but normally it puts uh, all the letters in uppercase but in this way it's more consistent so it 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 won't make our logic to break that much so now we have our action here and we told the model here in the prompt that it can be a bet, raise, call, check, or fault, but we don't uh, take this. And here in the game, always you can see here that F1, F2, F3. So those are the, um, the keys of the keyboard that you can press to take these actions. So you can either click in any of these three buttons, but you can also go to the keyboard and press any of these three keys or F4 for all in, but we are not considering doing all in. So only F1, F2, F3. So if it's bet or raise, that are the possible two cases that can go here in this uh, top button. Uh, it will be an F3. Uh, call or check. There can be the two options that will be here is F2 and fault is the later case. It will be always fault here. It will be F1 if it's not any of these four cases. So like this we are detecting which key the bot has to press and we will be using a P auto GUI to, to do it. But first we'll be printing here because we want to know how many time it took to do the um, API response basically. Then we will be printing which key we have detected here and which action we detected in the message. And also to print the full message to, to understand better the reasoning and to detect any possible problem with the response of the model. Then the next thing, now that we have the response, we will detect again if it's our turn because it can be the case that, well, not in this local game that we can take as long as we want to take actions, but it can be the case that it's no longer our turn for some reason. So just to check again if it's our turn. Otherwise, we will not take any action. But if it's our turn, we can print here that we are pressing this key. And then P auto GUI, just in case, will go to this coordinate that for my case is around here. So X is 2200. So around here and Y is uh, 5 on the top. So I want to go to this uh, coordinates and click. So I want to do this to put this window in, in top because if we press F1, F2 or F3, this key of here and this window is not on top, we won't press it here. We won't press it uh, somewhere else. So we want to click and then press the, the key action the bot has decided to take given these conditions. And then we will go to sleep one second just in case to make the game go around and update its state. And uh, if it's not our turn, so in this else case, we want to print that instead of pressing this key, we are skipping to press this key. So just to remember which was the key, but we are not pressing it, we are skipping to press it. Uh, just to know that uh, something happened and after all the API reasoning and so, it was no longer our turn. Okay, and we are in this try indentation of here. And if something happens and this try crashes, we want to print the exception that occurred to see if there is any problem in our uh, code or in the API to see what was the problem. And also the, the response message, if there is any, because sometimes the problem could be that there has been a response message, but it wasn't in this format. So we did not have any good response as we wanted. And that will be uh, all the code that we need. So now if we run this, instead of running it, we have created this in a file because we had this method here. If we remove this, this will be running in this uh, notebook cell. But I prefer to run this from the terminal from this file that has been created here, the pokerbot.py. So let's run now. Um, I will have to make this smaller just in case. Python poker bot.py and now it will start we can see here the line and it took three seconds uh, and this was the action that it wanted to play so it detected that we have a q and a 10 the cards and it wants to raise so it press f3 automatically and it put the mouse here first to click in this window and it pressed the key f3 now again it's our turn so we can see here the dashed line and now again, so it's playing automatically. I'm not touching anything. Uh, it's automatically playing and, and we can see here in the terminal what actions, uh, what is the reasoning, what is the time that it's taking. I'm sorry, but I, oh, okay, it failed. So um, normally with this prompt that I found, most of the times it's wanting to assist, but you can see here an example of what happens when you don't shift to trick, let's say, 
the prom uh, to make it clear that it is not a real bet, that we are doing experiments here without real money. But this was a, a real case. And if something happens, if our code doesn't find the action, uh, we are folding, which is the safest action to take. So if it doesn't find a uh, bet, raise, call, or check, it's basically doing F1 that is folding. So we are skipping to put more money into the table. Maybe we are losing a good hand, but it's better this than betting. So we are not losing more money at this. We could leave it here playing against the other bots to see if it's good. So if it's better than the other bots or not, but at least it's working automatically. Uh, also, you can find that uh, there is a maximum of requests that you can do to the API for now with Vision. So you could find that after 100 requests to the Vision API for uh, the same day, you cannot do until the next day uh, anymore. So um, this can be also a situation. You can request for more, but this is the default behavior for now. Let's see in the future. So this is how it works. I hope that this is helpful for you. And you can apply this to not only for poker, but other conditions. If you learn how to automate this full process, how to take screenshots from any part of the computer, let's say from any other program, send it to GPT-4 Vision, make it understand what's the task, automatically take its response, parse it, you can automate other actions. So this can be very helpful, not only for this uh, poker application, but for better ones. So I hope you enjoyed. Uh, give it a like and subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye bye.